Behind the scene on how cryptocurrency really works. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum. Wait, what are those? I'm pretty sure you've heard and seen these terms before since they are now part of the trend. But what do all of these really mean? What is up guys, this is Crypto Zones, and we're up for a brand new video where I will take you on a journey of cryptocurrency. Today I'm going to tell you what it is, why it keeps getting more important, which one is suited for you, and just like any other worlds, we'll also explore its dark side. On the early ages, there was no such thing as money. How do people get something they want? By trading which is actually the first stage of this evolution. Let's take this as an example. Your buddy has a pig and you really like it. So you get up to him and say, Hey man, I really like your pig. Can I have it? And you can have my dog in return. Even though it looked as if a win-win deal, most of the time trading doesn't happen. That's when currency came in, which started our second stage. Coins. Made from rare metals like gold and silver are accepted since they are worth something. Do you know what a British pound is? Well, technically they are called pound because they are literally a pound of silver. Because of this, everyone went frenzy over coins. That your buddy didn't care if you have the dog as long as you have the coins. And then boom, all of a sudden, trading becomes more efficient. But then this evolved to stage 3, the paper money. The establishment of banks under the government's control made us realize that as long as we trust the system, there is no need for us to carry loads of coins anymore, because we have something called the paper money. Although it's not made of rare metals anymore, we still see its value because the government says it has value. Like this $100 note here in the US. The note itself is just made of something that is not as precious as the coins, but this serves as a receipt or a kind of proof that you own a certain amount of money. But because of many technological advancements, we found out that there are more convenient ways of storing and trading our stuff. That's when the fourth stage comes in. Online trading, where more than ever people buy things online and use credit cards, and if you're at this stage already, you don't even see your money anymore. It is now just like a virtual logbook of your bank and your transactions. Take this as an example. Whenever you buy an audiobook from Amazon for $13, all that's happening is that your bank adds an entry on your logbook saying that you have $13 less in your account, while Amazon has $13 more in their account. So the reason why I'm giving you this entire context is for you to have an idea on where cryptocurrency sits. The cryptocurrency is 100% virtual. Doesn't the logo of the Bitcoin sort of reminds you of the shiny gold coin? Well, with its popularity, it sort of is a coin. Now, but with the cryptocurrencies, there is no real gold or silver backing up these digital assets. The idea is pretty much the same. Think of it as just writing down on a spreadsheet of who paid who, but rather than the number of banks keeping their own record of this spreadsheet with a crypto, just think of it as a gigantic spreadsheet of every transaction ever made using that particular currency. And that, my friend, is called the ledger. All right, all the banks have a nice and neatly organized spreadsheet, but what makes crypto so special, you ask? Well, that's because there are many definite advantages of having the system that cryptocurrencies uses. And the main one is that it's decentralized. That means while every transaction of a given cryptocurrency is all recorded on the same ledger, but there are many copies of that same ledger, way more than what the traditional bank would have. Have you heard of crypto mining? Well, it basically means someone has set up a computer, large or small, to crunch through these transactions on their own copy of this ledger, or in other words, spreadsheet, and guess what? There are just about a million Bitcoin miners around the globe. The Bitcoin is just a one type of crypto. The reason why Bitcoin is doing it well is that if you dedicate your computing power to mining Bitcoin, then you will earn some Bitcoin as compensation. The result? Say you go into a store to spend one Bitcoin on this item you want. Instead of just checking with one particular bank's record, the store will instead check with every single computer in that network. 
Say I have enough coin balance. Each computer will now give it a go ahead with a transaction. Then every single computer will update their record individually. You now end up having so many copies of the same ledger. It becomes virtually impossible if a crook tries to do something with anyone's account. If a crook hacks into your account and tries to send money to himself by adjusting the figures in that ledger, it simply won't go through. And that's because the other 99.99% .99 of copies of that ledger is saying one thing, but just one is saying something different. So it must have been tampered with. The organization to the system is unparalleled compared to the traditional banks and because of that, I think people believe in the system. Some see the future as an open, traceable transaction, much more so than having bits of transaction record here and there. I know, I know, this sounds super confusing and complex to most of you guys, but as we go through this, you just might realize that this method is way simpler than going through the traditional bank method, which requires a lot of documentations and unnecessary paperwork. With crypto, all you really need is an internet access with a laptop and you can now access crypto at your fingertips. The main advantage of the crypto is that you now don't have to rely on the banks anymore because all the data is now stored by the people on this ledger. You can now make international payments very quickly rather than waiting half a day for it to complete the transaction. With no limits to your spending plus exchange rates and the interest rate is now the thing of the past. And the best part? The transactional fee is virtually close to zero for some cryptocurrencies. The reason why the cryptocurrencies are called that is because they are secured by cryptography, also known as adversaries. And one example of this, which a lot of the major cryptos like Bitcoin uses, is called the blockchain. Some people get confused by this, but the blockchain isn't actually Bitcoin. The blockchain is not a currency itself. In a simple term, the blockchain is just a type of ledger. Think of it as a big spreadsheet everyone uses to record the transactions. Blockchain is a way of organizing. When I make a purchase on something with a Bitcoin, the transaction is recorded as a block. Every block contains the transaction data like who paid who and how much a hash, which is a unique identifier for that particular transaction and the hash of the previous block in the sequence or the latest transaction that was recorded on that block. And the pivot in which the system relies on is that if something in that block has been changed, then the block's hash will change. You may be starting to see where this whole thing is going because every block also has the data of the previous block. If the hash of the block here changes, then the next one will no longer have the matching hash, so every succeeding block after that one becomes invalid. Imagine combining this with what we've talked about earlier. This idea of a million different users having this particular blockchain ledger, if I wanted to create a fraudulent transaction that says this person paid me money, not only do I have to tamper with that one block, now I have to tamper with every single block after it. But also, I would also have to do this to the other half a million computers around the globe, so the majority of the computers will be consistent, but the one I just tampered with is not. This pretty much makes it virtually impossible versus just hacking someone's traditional bank account then send myself money. This actually happens every day all around the world and that's why when you're buying a house, the title company will send you this form called the Wire Fraud and Electronic Funds Transfer Advisory. Hackers all around the world have stolen billions of dollars via bank hacking. There is a huge jump between hacking into one bank account or trying to hack into over 500,000 uncorrelated computers at once. Cryptocurrencies have its flaws, and we'll get into them in a bit, but hopefully you're seeing why some people are so excited about them, and that brings us to the investment side of cryptocurrencies. You've heard of people putting in some money into the cryptos, and it simply means one if exchanging regular currency for cryptos like Bitcoin. They are speculating that those coins will become the next hit and therefore suddenly goes up in value, at which point they can either purchase something with it or exchange them back to the normal currency. Did you know there's actually a term for skyrocketing cryptocurrencies? It may sound a little funny, but it is called mooning or going to the moon. That can mean something very different depends on who you ask, but the decision that one has to make at this point is which cryptocurrency to consider buying. 
Well, that's because there are over 4,000 available cryptos to choose from, and each of them has its own unique properties to offer. Ethereum, for example, which is second most popular coin in the world of crypto investments, can process transactions ever faster than the Bitcoin. Cardano, which is considered to be technologically superior, and there's one called the Litecoin, which also has the latest algorithm. And by the way, I hope you're finding this information valuable. If so, please hit that like button and consider subscribing so you never miss another video with full of great content. Also, here's a disclaimer that you should never listen to other people's financial advice until you do your own due diligence. Cryptocurrency is considered very volatile and speculative. Please do yourself a favor and don't throw all your hard-earned cash into one basket. And with that said, this brings us to the fourth part of this video, the dark side of the crypto world. One of the main ones is that I've already mentioned, it's volatility. Have you noticed that the Bitcoin price when Elon tweeted about the Bitcoin? This makes a lot of people to not take crypto very seriously. These are so new and completely digital and like the trading and market for gold or silver that no one really knows what they should be worth. And so many will find the prices very unpredictable. My personal suggestion is that if you don't have the stomach to endure the roller coaster like price fluctuation, then don't do it. Second reason is that they're not really acknowledged as a mode of payment in most of the places. Yep, there are some transactions that can be done with crypto such as booking holidays and donating but there are some who don't accept them like Tesla, Microsoft and even Burger King even though they initially said they would. The third reason is that there can be an environmental impact to all of us. You know about global warming, greenhouse effects, CFC emissions and the likes, right? Well, fair criticism in itself, the fundamental security of Bitcoin is the use of many different computers. This actually causes some sort of chain reaction, and if we look at it closely, it goes like this. Crypto needs security from millions of computers. These computers need loads and loads of power consumption, and the rest follows as you know it. The fourth reason is that since there's no specific regulation or policing in crypto right now, it's like the perfect currency for the crooks. Actually, basing on the current data and chain analysis, 0.34% of transactions made through crypto are criminal, and up to 5% of traditional cash transactions are criminal as well. So, the data speaks for itself, right? Well, probably because there is a bit of a misconception that cryptos are anonymous, but in fact they are pseudonymous. This means that even though you're not exposing your actual details, like your name and address, your public key and your unique identifier, will be permanently backed into your blockchain for every transaction you make. Lastly, have you heard of Dogecoin? If you follow Elon Musk, you probably know a little about that. This coin is actually based on the identical tech as the Litecoin, but they actually created this as a joke and people have put a little bit of money in it since they thought it was funny. But that has actually skyrocketed the price to a point where some have become millionaires. What an interesting time as all live in. If you did find this useful and interesting, then do consider sharing it with a friend or a family member. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to keep you updated on our latest posts and videos. This is CryptoZones, and we'll see you next time.